Hey, welcome back. Today we're learning even more about how to live humbly. Why? Because it's always the right time to be humble. Thinking of others before yourself is one of the best ways to show the love of God to other people. Let's get today's lesson started. But first, this week's theme is snack time. So it wouldn't be right if we didn't have a little mystery taste testing game first. Check it out. All right, every time it's snack time, you know you want to drink. So we are going to do a blind taste test on interesting sodas. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, let's get mystery soda number one. Where's your number one cup? It's kind of, ooh, tan colored. I guess we really didn't need that much, did we? <laughs> All right, we're gonna taste it and then guess what it is, ready? Here we go. <coughs> Maple syrup. Yeah, that tastes like watery syrup. Let's see. Oh, maple syrup soda. We got one right. All right, let's set that over there. Oof. Number two. All right. Okay, this one's a little darker. I'm a little scared. tastes like graham crackers. If there was a liquid graham cracker. I have no idea. I'm going to say graham cracker soda. What are you going to say? Like butter something? Okay. Butter. All right. Popcorn? I don't know. And it is... It is... It is... S'mores! Oh, okay, that one wasn't that bad. All right, number three. Number three. Oh, it's white. I'm scared. That's good. Ready? Not good. I gave you water. <laughs> what do you think? Um, cheese? Soda? Like something moldy. Oh, that's so gross. And it is ranch dressing. Ranch dressing should not be a soda, you guys. <coughs> oh, that's awful. Okay, no. Oh, there goes your number four. Sorry, grab it. Number four is orange. Here we go. I'm almost afraid. I hope this is something actually good. Number four. Here we go. Mm. <coughs> nope. It tastes like moldy bread. I don't even have a... Okay, that does not taste like oranges. I don't even have a guess. <laughs> That's bad. That's moldy bread. You gotta guess something. What would you guess? Um, just, I, I don't know. It's nasty. Ooh, you tried it again? Like some bad orange syrup or something? I don't know. Ugh. 
Oh. Enchilada. Enchilada soda. Enchilada. <laughs> That's disgusting. Bad. Okay, last one. I'm so glad because I can't taste anymore. Oh, Please be this good. is going to be a good one. It looks good. Please be good. It's got a little... Here's number five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is that? Are any of these good? No. <sighs> it's like cough syrup. I'm going to say cough syrup. I don't like know why some, they make it a soda, but I'm going to say cough syrup. Like some licorice? Licorice something? Oh, gosh, that's awful. Bacon. Oh, bacon. Bacon I've had. Soda. Ooh. That did not taste like bacon to me. Mm -mm. At all. Tastes like cough syrup. Okay, well. Um Yeah. Taste test over. Aren't you glad you didn't taste these? <laughs>
always helps. And that song is just so awesome. <laughs> Let's get back to snacks because now I am really in the mood for a snack. So would you say you are craving more potato chips right now? Only if it's the cheesesteak kind. Mm -hmm. You know, one time I ate an entire bag in three minutes. I don't recommend doing that. My tummy immediately regretted it, but it is one of my greatest accomplishments. <sighs> you never stop surprising me, Cam. <laughs> you always have the best stories. Hey, you got any more food related stories? Well, actually, as a matter of fact, I do. I've never told anybody this story, but one day at lunchtime, I was starving. Nothing surprising there. Yeah. I had packed my lunch all by myself, and it was the dream lunch. Crackers and hummus, a yogurt pouch, slice of pizza, and a peanut butter and potato chip sandwich. All of my favorites in one lunchbox. And my mom had given me a dollar, fresh and crisp, perfect for buying an ice cream cone. It was ice cream day. And you know that only comes once a week. So this was a super big deal. I had eaten every last bite of my lunch and I was in the line to buy my perfectly perfect ice cream cone with the chocolate on top when it happened. What was it? The girl right in front of me had lost her dollar. She had ordered her cone, reached in her pocket, and her money just wasn't there. I felt so bad because she'd already gotten her hopes up for the ice cream and she had no idea the dollar was missing. Well, what happened? What did she do? I mean, did she just get out of line? Did someone pay for her cone? I mean, what happened? I've, 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 I've got to know. Right then and there, I was faced with a choice. I could either let her have my dollar so that she could have the ice cream cone, or I could let her walk away coneless and enjoy my ice cream cone with the chocolate drizzle on top. Man, what did you do? I remember Joseph's story. I love food. Pizza, triple-decker oatmeal cream pies, mega buckets of cheese balls, it's all so good. When my pantry is stocked full of favorites, I'm living the dream. But when my friends come over, I go into high alert mode, stashing the goods behind the veggie chips on the bottom shelf. Cause you know, you can have friends and you can have food, but your friends can't have your food. Joseph had the same opportunity to stash all the food he had been saving up for seven years. But instead, he did something not many of us would do. He shared the food with people from all over Egypt who were in need during famine. Even Joseph's brothers, the ones who had thrown him into a pit and sold him as a slave, showed up hungry, leaving Joseph with a decision to make. His brothers didn't recognize Joseph and bowed down to him as they asked him for food. 
The whole situation was causing Joseph to get all emotional. On one hand, he did not want to give them food and thought about how nice revenge would feel. But on the other hand, these were his brothers, his family, and they had needs that he could meet. Joseph decided to fill their bags with more food than they came to buy, and without them knowing, gave them their money back. As Joseph's brothers were heading home, they made a pit stop. That's when they noticed something shiny in one of the bags. As they opened it up, Joseph's brothers saw that the money they had given for the food had been returned. Immediately, they all began to panic and wonder if they had been set up. Was someone trying to make them look like thieves? They wondered if God was trying to get their attention. They asked, what is this that God has done to us? They didn't realize that God was actually trying to take care of them. I don't always think about how my actions toward other people might affect their lives and their view of God. But God wants me to live humbly, putting the needs of my friends and my family over my own, just like Joseph did. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna need God's help with this one. I mean, I really love keeping these guys right here, but not anymore. Cheese balls, anyone? You gave her your dollar, didn't you? Yep, I gave her the dollar and I told her she didn't have to pay me back. I can't believe that I haven't heard this story. I didn't want to brag because that would make this story all about me. And well, that's not putting others first. That's awesome. It's just the way God wants us to live. And that's what the Bible talks about in Micah 6, 8. In Micah 6, 8, the Bible tells us that the Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy. And you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. When God's Word says we must be humble, it's His way of telling us that we should think about what others want and need more than we think about what we want. In other words, being humble is just putting others first. We can live humbly every day by looking around to see how we can do something good for the people in our lives before we do things for ourselves. And when this verse says to be humble as we live in the sight of our God, that's just a reminder that it's okay if no one sees the good things we do for others. Because God sees, and He is who matters most. <laughs> so that's what it's like to live humbly. I'm gonna have to keep my eyes open for a way that I can help someone else today. <laughs> well, let's practice using our eyes with this next game that we can all play together. Okay, this one is an emoji guessing game. We're going to put some emojis up on the screen. Together, the emojis make a type of food. We're all going to try and guess what food we think the emojis are spelling out. This is gonna be awesome. All right, get ready, viewers, because these emojis are coming in hot. Okay, so emoji number one, we have... A pug. Fire and pug. Fire pugs. Fire, fire, uh... Hot. Hot dog. Hot dog, hot dog. <laughs> okay, that's, that's number one, we got hot dog. Hot dog. Got it, all right. Chef Key. Key chef? No. Chef Baker. Baker. Baker Key. Um, cook. Cook. Cook Key. Cook key. Cook Man, I'm so key. bad at this game. All right. All right, round three. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> oh. Pan. Cake. Pancake. Got it. All right. All right, number four. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. All right. Chick. What do you have at the beach? Chick. Sand. And then? Uh, it's a chicken sandwich. I love it. All right. Okay, so. Uh, Chocolate. Right. Um, bot uh, wait, wait, what's, what's in, in the, the bottle? bottle? So nope. milk and shake. shake. So chocolate, milk, milk shake. shake. Bingo. <laughs> Got it. All right. That was so fun. It was great, but I mean, I'm really super hungry now. Well, why don't we take a quick snack break while we check this out? Tell us a time that you used something you had to help somebody else. Hmm. Oh, you're going to love this story. So God has given me a very loud voice and really long arms. So I had the privilege of getting caught on in class all the time. Well, one day we were researching famous inventions in class and the teacher had us volunteer to raise our hand and share what we found. So I thought I found something really cool, but my friend Ram also thought he found something really cool. So I decided to help him out. I used my long arms to raise my hands. Since he was short and he's kind of quiet, I raised my hand and sure enough, I got caught on. And instead of sharing what I had found, he shared what he had found. And he got to tell the class how slushies and ices were made. How somebody's ice machine broke, they took the drinks, put them in the freezer, took them out later, and there were slushies and ices, the same ones you enjoy at the gas stations today. 
was a cool story. It really was. You know, so many good things can come from being humble and just using what you have to help others out. Yep, and I may need your help with what's coming up next. Rapid, Rapid Fire, Fire Review. Yes! All right, one of us is going to recap everything we've learned today in one minute or less. But there's a catch. While one of us is reviewing, the other one is gonna be throwing things. If the reviewer is able to name six things we've talked about today during that minute, the thrower has to put their hand in the mystery box. But if the reviewer doesn't name at least six things during the minute, they have to put their hand into the mystery box. And since today is all about snacks, there's probably something in there that's delicious or not so delicious. Mm, I really want that box now. <laughs> Me too. I guess we're just gonna have to play a game to see who's going to get it. Okay, um, I'm thinking of a number between one and 10. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go with five this time. It's right in the middle, it's safe. I like your strategy, but the number is one. Ugh, oh, I overshot. All right, you win. Yes, that means I'm gonna play the review game. <laughs> Let's go. All right, safety goggles on. And here we go. <laughs> Okay, we learned that being humble means uh, putting others first. Um, then we uh, we ate uh, we ate some chips. Uh, we sang a <laughs> really cool song. Uh, we heard about Joseph and how he took care of others just because he could. Um, uh, and then there was the story about the other person, just like us, who's living humbly, putting others first. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Done in record time. Uh, well, that was record time, Ryan, but I'm afraid you only named five things from today. Oh, man. Okay, let's go to the mystery box. Okay, mystery box, what do you got? All right. Oh, oh it's okay, it's cold. Um, it's kind of hard, but it's, oh, it's squishy in the middle, like there's a, a filling of some? Oh, like, uh, okay, I'm gonna guess it's like in, Unmicrowaved hot pocket. Yeah, is that? Did I get it? Uh, no, very much not a hot pocket. <laughs> it's an ice cream cone. Wait, wait, hold up. An ice cream cone with chocolate drizzle on top, just like the one from your story. And you're right. You're gonna love it. You know, actually, I think you should have it. After all this time. Oh, thanks, bud. <laughs> Today was so much fun. We learned how to live humbly and use what we had to help other people. There's a prayer that I wanna pray that I think will help us this week, so let's pray. Father, thank you so much for loving us and giving us so many awesome things. We want to show your love to everyone we meet. Help us see where we can put others' needs before our own. Thank you, we love you, amen. How sweet, the prayer and the ice cream. I know, right? Uh, but now it's time to find out about next week's challenge. You ready? I was born ready. Wait, I have an idea. How about this time we both look at the card at the same time? Great idea. All right, uh, let's close our eyes and we'll open them on the count of three. Okay, closed eyes. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> what, is this real? This is gonna be the best one yet. So many good things can come from being humble. So I can't help but wonder if you guys have a few stories of how you put someone else first or how you use something you had to help someone else. Spend the next few minutes sharing those stories now and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.